my name is Kate. I'm from DailyTarotGirl.com, and today I'm going to be talking with Sasha Graham. And Sasha Graham is the author of two tarot books, Tarot Diva and the upcoming book, 365 Tarot Spreads, which is going to be due out May 8th. So welcome uh, to my show, Sasha. I am so excited to talk with you. Before, um, before we met, I did a little bit of research on you, and you are a fascinating person. And so <laughs> I'm so excited to, to chat with you. So um, when I was doing my research, I, you know, I uncovered that you used to be a B movie, uh, an actress in B horror movies. I was, was yes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you were born on Halloween as well. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and you're you're known as the tarot diva, which I think is so awesome. And you have this whole kind of, you know, diva persona, which I think is really really unique. So I'm really excited to to chat with you today. Oh, well, thank you for having me. <laughs> so um, I'm just curious about your your new book on tarot spreads. So I'm just wondering if you could kind of tell us a little bit about your new book and why you created it. Absolutely. Um, and I'm so, I'm so excited to be able to talk about it because it's been such an amazing project and I think, I really think people are going to love it. Um, so let me explain to you what it is. It's a tarot spread for each and every day of the year. Um, and I wrote it because, shockingly, I realized there wasn't a book out there that had a tarot spread for every day of the year. And there's th so many 365 books about everything under the sun from knitting to your sex life to, you know, uh, kitchen recipes, like everything, but not for tarot. So I thought, oh, here's an opportunity to create something um, that hasn't been done. And then in, in, in going an extra step, what I did was every single spread is connected to uh, either a holiday or an occurrence that happened on that day. So whatever happened on that day, for instance, on the Mexican Day of the Dead, November 1st, uh, the spread is a speak to the dead spread. So the spreads are informed by the fact that I chose for that particular day. And then um, it, that it also connects to a tarot card. So for the day of the dead, it connects to the death card. And I talk a little bit about the death card. So it's like a really cool way of like sort of moving through the year and, and doing lots of tarot spreads because I love spreads. Yeah, that sounds really unique. That, that sounds really unique. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's, you know, it, yeah, I think it's really cool. I mean, I, I love tarot spread books because my favorite thing to do with the cards is obviously ask questions. Mm -hmm. And so I would go back to my favorite spread books and, and, and trying to figure out why I liked it. It was because they would give me new ways to explore whatever my subject was or like they would frame their questions really well. So what the book really became was this big book of questions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So do you all, when you do readings, do you always use tarot spreads? I don't, I typically don't use original tarot spreads at all. In fact, when I'm reading professionally, nine times out of 10, I use a Celtic cross spread um, because I just feel like that gives me the big picture, a comprehensive picture of the person that I'm reading for. Um, and then, so I'll do that or I'll do the three card stairway spread if somebody has something very specific and they want to know um, exactly sort of what's going to happen. Um, so those are the two spreads that I use most of all, but my favorite thing to do is create a spread when somebody, like I love if I'm working on somebody who is doing something creative, say a choreographer who's putting up dance piece, then I create spreads based on every single like aspect of the production that they want to look at, and then I think that's very helpful. So I like to create spreads on the spot. Right, too. right, yeah. Yeah, that is a lot of fun. I like doing that too, just kind of making up spreads and yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, what do you feel, because uh, I know some people love working with spreads, other people don't as much, and it's funny because I, when I was first learning tarot, I always used spreads, and I did that for like the first couple years, and then I went to a reader who didn't use spreads, and it was such a weird experience, and she, as she was reading, she would just, um, uh, you know, she used like so many cards too, and she would just like be kind of pulling cards and putting them on the table, and then she just would keep going, and 
I'm putting cards down on top of cards. I'm like, whoa, that's so overwhelming. Um, but it's a really good reading. And so I think sometimes it has to do with, you know, our personalities. Like some people love the structure of a spread and other people like to just, you know, uh, go full tilt drawing cards. So I'm curious, you know, what your opinion is on that. What do, what do you feel are the some of the pros to using a spread and some of the cons to, to using a spread? Um, I think that's fine. I know someone who reads like that and it's, it's mind blowing. And yeah. she just, she, she, she fans through the entire deck as, as she's reading for you. And it's amazing. I can say never, I can't imagine reading like that for myself personally. Um, I think what's fantastic about creating a spread, especially creating an original spread is whatever you're reading for, it gives you an opportunity to sort of step back from the situation and then phrase the questions in a way so that you get the most powerful answer. Mm -hmm. um, if we're talking about an original spread, that's why I think they're so incredibly, incredibly helpful. And so often, you know, the questions are about romance or love. And so that you can tinker each space for exactly, you know, the answer, the, the, the answer that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's incredibly helpful. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like, uh, I feel like working with the spread is almost like kind of setting an intention for the reading, sort of. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think that it's also incredibly helpful when you're working with a client, because what one of the greatest things, right, you can do as, as a reader is help your client structure their question. And you can find out about a person's state of mind, even by looking at the way that they're asking their questions, are they acknowledging the role that they play in their future, or are they just sort of like, oh, whatever, you know, destiny is going to happen. And I think that, you know, I've always said that um, the way you phrase a question will will sort of inadvertently channel the way your mind looks for the answer. Um, so if you ask the right questions, you'll get the answers that you really need. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that's what it comes down to when you're doing your reading, whether or not it's going to be helpful for you is is how you ask the question. I think that's like super important. Yeah, yeah. And then and then it's like weird when I do like the Celtic cross um, for people, which is like such a standard spread. It just it 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 becomes like this weird sort of 3D thing hap that happens with the cards where the ones that are really important sort of like pop out. So I don't know if that's maybe a structure thing. Right. Um, but like even the way that you structure um, a, a tarot spread can be an intention or a magical act in and of itself. You know, mm -hmm. if you're creating a pyramid, which, you know, a pyramid spread, which is about sort of going to your higher self, um, that can have magical significance too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, my next question is, do you have any tips um, when it comes to connecting the cards in a reading? Because I know... Um, you know, when I do a spread, like say I'm doing this Celtic cross spread, mm -hmm. and, you know, I can read each card in the exact position, and um, then I like to kind of take a step back and find ways to kind of connect the cards, but I know that that's something that a lot of people really struggle with is um, connecting the cards in a reading. So I'm just wondering if you have any tips for going about doing that. Oh, that's interesting. You mean connecting the cards and sort of like the narrative of what the yeah. of what there is. You know, I, that's where a three card past, present, future spread becomes incredibly helpful if you're looking to see, especially I guess in the beginning, if you're looking to see how the cards relate to each other. Um, it just a three card spread is so you know past, present, future. It's so obvious. You can I often say it's like reading a graphic novel. It's so and you know my right. you know. And your old could look and say, oh, I see what's going on there. Um, so I think that's incredibly helpful. I think that when you're looking at a, 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 a spread with a lot of um, cards looking at numbers that are coming up, right, are there a lot of twos, that implies duality. Are there a lot of nines, that means you're at the end of the situation. Are there a lot of majors as opposed to uh, minor cards or an abundance of suits, like if it's full of cups, then it's very heartfelt and emotional. So I think that those are the things you want to be looking for um, mm -hmm. with with a big, uh, like a Celtic cross spread. Yeah. Um, and then I think that just it comes with practice. Like I can't say when the Celtic cross leapt to life for me. I don't remember the exact moment, but mm -hmm. you know, I know that it did and it does. And now it's just like read a book. 
Right. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So looking for repeating themes is, is something that you do in your reading. Yeah, definitely. Repeating, yeah, repeating numbers, repeating a lot of pages, a lot of nights. I mean, that'll set the tone. And I think it'll sort that then sort of underlays, it becomes the connective fabric of what the entire situation is. Right. So I think it gives you the point that that gives you the leaping off point. And something that Something that I learned at the tarot school, which I thought was a really, really sage piece of advice from Walt Amberstone, was that you don't have to start speaking right away when you lay down your cards. Mm -hmm. You know, you have somebody sitting there and they're so excited and they want to know, they want to know. It's okay to take your time, take a dramatic pause. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, don't rush. And what ha I, I can, I, I get really excited when I see certain cards, and I, I rush through things a lot because I want to get to my point. But yeah, I think it's really important for beginners to take their time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really good advice because I know for me, when I do professional readings, I do feel that you know pressure to fill all the time with talking and and everything. But I've when I've done when I've had readings myself, and the reader has taken that sort of long pause it allows me to kind of absorb what she said mm -hmm. and kind of think of you know what i want to ask next or whatever so i, I think that's an important thing to to remember to do yeah. It's, yeah it's so so important and you know it, in the course of a reading so much information gets lost you know there's so much information coming at the person i used to i used to offer my clients like a bullet point i quickly put down the bullet points of the things that we went over so that they would walk away with sort of a guide they could look back on. Because um, it's a lot. It's a lot of information. And it can be tough because sometimes you see it so clearly. And, you, and I used to struggle with articulating it correctly. Do they understand? Do they see what I see? But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I understand that you do a lot of tarot parties. Tarot what? Tarot parties? Tarot parties, yeah. I do. I do. Well, I live in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot, there's a lot of events going on on any night of the week, so I get hired for, yeah, for a lot of events. Yeah. And what's your favorite thing about doing tarot parties? Oh my God, so my favorite thing, and I'm glad you asked, is that um, it's, it's like being an inadvertent sociologist. I find myself, like, just this past weekend, I did an amazing masquerade party. Um, for this extraordinary group of people, and no matter what party you're going to, right, you're, you're dealing with like a subset of the population. And so, because I'm fortunate enough to be in New York City, I've gotten a sort of glimpse into lifestyles of the rich and famous, which has been really amazing. I've, I've, I've been hired by really interesting, really successful um, people, and I've been to parties that I, you know, not normally would have been invited to. Um, uh, seen some incredible places and being a tarot card reader, you know, you're the one that they sit down with and whisper their secrets to. Yeah. So it's fascinating. And you find out, I always am, I'm always awed by the fact that it like, no matter how wealthy or beautiful someone is, like we're all just looking for the same things. Mm -hmm. And that's across the board. You know, I've read for, strippers at a high-end strip club on a Mardi Gras. I've read for a billionaires and their friends. I've read for, um, you know, holiday parties for, for just for corporations. And it doesn't matter who you're dealing with. Like, we really are all the same. And I think that that's a lesson that I'll, I relearn it every time. And it's always. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's easy to forget that, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually that's one one of the main reasons I got into tarot is that um, that whole idea that I was going to be someone that all these people would share their secrets with really appealed to me. <laughs> and that's one of the things that, that drew me to tarot, actually. So that's interesting that you say that. Well, I think that, you know, girls, I, you know, one of like the very stereotypical things that goes along with being a girl is sharing your emotions, sharing your secrets, sharing yourself with someone, someone else, and and you know, girls crave intimacy. So it's so much fun to have like immediate intimacy. Yes. Oh, with a complete stranger, yeah. and they're open up to you, and it's fascinating. Yeah, it is, and I'm always um, amazed at how 
when you read tarot for someone, it seems to like create instant trust. Like they instantly trust you and they tell you all kinds of things. And it always amazes me because I also do counseling. And the funny thing with counseling is sometimes it takes multiple sessions, like hours to build trust and hours before someone might open up to you. But when I do tarot readings, it's like they'll sit down two minutes in, they'll like tell me all this really intimate stuff, which always just yeah. like blows me away. <laughs> yes, and 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 it's and, and I thought about this so many times. It for some reason, and this is this is why I think tarot reading is just fascinating in and of itself. People sit down and unlike a therapist with a tarot card reader, they sit down and if most people's general assumption when they come to a psychic or a reader is that when they sit down in the seat opposite from you, you can see them. Mm -hmm. You already you know who they are. Mm -hmm. So energetically, they're coming to you open. Um, and then, yeah, so I think that they, they, they spill things or the, they'll say things because they just assume that you already know. Right. Um, and that, it, guessing in a crisis, because it's also the way a lot of people who have been terrorized by a reading mm -hmm. and are very nervous, you know, have been told negative things maybe by, by someone. So I think that as, as readers, it's something that you have to hold in very high regard and always be really keen on, um, mm -hmm. because there is a level of trust that people bring to tarot card reading. Yes. Yeah. And, and that being said, like I've had a lot of experiences where I could tell that the person I was reading for was immediately really, really nervous. Like they were really scared about what I was going to say. Like they thought I was going to, you know, say something really bad or whatever. So I'm curious um, if you've had that happen and if you have, what, what do you do to kind of put the person at ease when you're reading for them? I mean, it's a funny thing. I, I, I start, I would start, I start my private session saying, look, I don't believe that I don't believe tarot is so predictive in that if the death card comes up, you're going to die tomorrow. I mean, I always talk about the role people play in their future because if tarot was 100% predictive and I could figure everything out, I'd be in San Tropez right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> not doing tarot parties in New York. <laughs> so so I, always, I always broach the topic with, you know, you have the – the biggest role in your future. And my main theme of Tarot Diva was that, you know, if you know yourself well enough, you'll know more than any psychic could ever tell you. And I really, I really think that that's true. Um, so to put people in, I mean, as much at ease as I can, I, I let them know that it's, a, you know, Tarot is a great predictor of energetically what's coming down the road in the future. Um, and that I think that the messages that come through, um, should be sort of like a way for you to find your truth on that particular day in that particular situation, but nothing. Right. So, and if they get a card or I say something they don't like, then we'll pull cards to see how to navigate it. So right, it's all right. about proactivity, I guess. Yeah. So you just answered the, my next question that I was going to ask you, which was, do you really believe that tarot can predict future events? Cause I feel like there's, kind of two schools of thought there's a lot of people think that yes it can and other people are more like well myself I think that you know tarot is really good at giving you a snapshot of what's going on right now and then mm -hmm. like you said you know get an idea of kind of where the energies of the present are going to kind of lead you in the future um, yeah. have you ever done a reading where you were able to you know really accurately predict really specific future events Oh, you know what? I was on the PIX Morning News last year. They would have me on as their Friday psychic. And they they asked, I, I think I, they were, it was during, oh, was it the Giants that were in the Super Bowl? And I correctly predicted that they would win. And I think I correctly predicted, like, the point spread. And that was so simplistic. I just said it was the number that came up on the card, like, when I flipped the yeah. card. Um, and, yeah, so that was kind of exciting because I said that I think in front of a few million people who were watching the news that day. <laughs> so I really wanted to be right. Um, but, you know, again, I, I just, I, 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 it frustrates me when people sit down and just want to know the future outcome. Because yeah. um, I really don't think that that's what, what tarot is for. And I understand that people think that, but it's like when, when anybody walks away from a reading, you can only confirm 
what's already happened anyway. They'll say, oh, that psychic really saw my daughter and my husband and my life situation. And wow, she knew that I like still love my stuffed animals, even though I'm 32. That was so mind blowing. Um, but nobody's mind is ever blown for future things, really, right. I don't think. And um, yeah, I don't know. Right. I don't yeah, yeah. So, um, my next question is totally unrelated to tarot. <laughs> I really want to know more about your career as a, a B movie horror actress. Oh, that's so fun! I'm so happy, I'm so happy to talk about that too, because it was that was such a fun, fun time in my life. Um, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, I want to know like how you got into that. Kind of what gave you the idea to get into that how you got into it and kind of what it was like. What it was like. Well, the funny thing is, is that it's a hundred percent connected to tarot and it's only in like the, the, like being older and being able to look back and sort of connect my dots to go, Oh, right. The supernatural was always such a theme in my life. Um, you know, I was always, I wanted to be an actress from when I was a young girl, and I was always a voracious reader. Um, Interview with a Vampire blew my mind when I was like 16 years old. Um, I moved to New York City at 18 and started trying to get acting work. And without even intentionally doing so, everything I got was vampire plays the first like independent film i got cast in was a vampire movie and i did that one vampire movie that got into blockbuster and i was on the cover and suddenly i had other independent filmmakers calling me up asking me to be in their movies and it was so much fun because when you think of b movies you think of like a b screen queen sort of like running topless getting chased but that, was, that wasn't the movies I was making. I was playing a vampire or a werewolf or an alien or a gangster. And all of the women in the films that I did were these strong supernatural creatures who may or may not have gotten murdered by the end of the film, but they were really strong each and in their, in their own way. And roles like that for women, I, I, I had so much fun. Like they were so, so, so much fun. Um, yeah, so I did, I, yeah, so I think I made like 15 or 16 of them. Yeah. Um, and then in my late twenties, I thought, well, you know, I think I'm ready for something else. <laughs> <laughs> they were awesome. Yeah. And so how, I'm curious how, um, like how that experience has kind of shaped how you are today as a tarot reader. Well, it's a, it, this, okay, so here again, how, how, it's, how it's connected, not even um, just sort of supernaturally, um, if you want to connect, like playing a werewolf to also playing with magic with a tarot deck. Um, when you're an actor, um, and it doesn't matter what kind of an actor you are, um, energetically, you set yourself up in a certain way so that when you're doing your lines and you're in a scene, you're reacting off of the other person and you're open. And when I started doing tarot readings, I thought, oh, my God, energetically, I'm in that same open space that I used to be when I was acting, but now I'm opening myself up for a client. Right. And because both of them, with both, with both things, you're still looking for the inspiration, right, mm -hmm. from yeah. above. You want to be yeah. authentic in a scene. Um, in a tarot reading, you want to be open to pick, picking up the things that that person needs to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I found it was shockingly the same process. And then I took a painting class, an oil painting class, and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the, at the, the nude subject and I'm painting them and looking for their shadows. And I thought, this is the same as a tarot reading. It's the same as acting. I'm opening myself up and allowing myself to respond mm -hmm. um, to this person. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so it's interesting that you say that because um, there, there's, those are three things that have really not anything in common, you know, like acting, painting, tarot reading, but they totally do. And yeah. there's like that common thread that connects them. And I noticed that when um, I used to do professional belly dancing and I used to dance in restaurants and um, at parties and on stage and everything. And I was really, really into it. And I was also into tarot at the same time. And um, and I noticed the same thing that there were so many similarities to, you know, getting up on stage and performing and like you say, kind of, you know, opening yourself up. 
Yeah. And there were so many similarities to how I did that and how I did my tarot reading. And I feel like it made me a stronger tarot reader, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ab I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I think, you know, it's like, like it, it's all about opening up energetically and allowing truth to come through. Mm -hmm. And that truth can either be via your words or via the, the movement that you're doing with your hips. Right. Um, yeah, it's all the same. And, and, and that, again, goes back to why... I love tarot. Yeah. Because really when you look at like millions of people walking around and you know, everything is, I, I feel like I, through tarot, I've been able to reduce everything to its greatest common factor. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose that's what sacred geometry is based on. Mm -hmm. um, that things like, you know, that belly dancing and tarot reading and acting and painting really are, are all that different right yeah and i you know it's funny Which i just i think it, it blows my mind it's good that yeah. not isn't really that. yeah and i think it's interesting too like i've noticed that people that are really into tarot seem to be similar in that i feel like we're all sort of these sort of um multi-passionate people that have a lot of different kind of creative hobbies and passion and I don't know if it's that we're like that and then we're drawn to tarot because of that or if working with tarot kind of opens our minds to all different things well I mean I think to, to actively an active tarot practice you you have to be someone who's self-reflective mm -hmm. and who's questioning and if you know and I think that's why and are deep and are emotional and are curious and i think that that's why so many people in the tarot world are artists and they're writers or they're um, therapists or they are very deep multifaceted faceted people um yeah exactly for that reason because you're questioning and you're introspective and so that does sort of you know not to say an accountant can't be incredibly introspective and I you know that that would uh, but yeah I think that's probably why yeah yeah so um I love how this conversation has totally um gone in a really interesting direction yes. <laughs> um my my last question for you is what um what role do you feel tarot plays in your life right now oh Tarot is my repository <laughs> for everything. I mean, yeah. it really, it really, really is. You know, it it gave me something to write about. I've always wanted to write, um, mm -hmm. and I've I found so much fun creativity with the cards. Um, my deck is so thick because I'm incredibly indecisive, so I'm always checking in with the cards. But I, I mean, it gives it continually offers me a lens with which to view what's happening and it takes me out of my head which which is why, why why i think it's it's its greatest gift and i think it tarot enables anyone um you know to to really change their life I, I, and so yeah i I'm constantly like every day I, I pull a card and I'm like, what do I need to, what do I need to focus on? What, what, what one thing can I focus on today to make today a really awesome day? And I was even trying to come up with like the best question you could possibly ask the tarot. Yeah. Um, and so far the best question I can think of is, <laughs> is what can I do right now in this moment that will bring me pleasure and also positively impact my future? Yeah. And I think that's, Right? Yeah, that's a really powerful question. And that's interesting because whenever I um, sit down with my cards, I find that the older I get, the less um, I feel like I need to know. And so right. I've kind of experimented with that too. Like what question, what questions bring the best readings? And for me, sometimes just asking like, what do I need to see right now? Or what do I need to know? But I really like yours, your question about, you know, what... And what was it again? What can bring me the most pleasure or the most joy? Yeah, what can I do in the moment, right? And this is, I, and I say that because, you know, I love the idea of time travel. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I love that you can go like forwards and backwards and sideways in time with tarot. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know, you know, what we make our mind up on today has an impact on tomorrow. So always wanting to be as conscious as I can, I ask, what can I do right now in this moment or like within the next hour um, that will bring me the utmost pleasure because I really love living in the moment and I, I, I strive to live in the moment like the world card um, while positively impacting my future. Yeah. You know, so it's that balance between what can I do that I'll enjoy, but that'll also set me up so that I'm safe. Yeah. That's wonderful. I love that. That's so powerful. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you so much, Sasha, for um, coming on my show and letting me pick your brain and ask you questions. Um, I wish you the best of luck with your book, and it's called 365 Tarot Spreads. And I believe there's more to that title, right? Yes, 365 Tarot Spreads, um, Revealing the Magic in Every Day. And Llewellyn is publishing it on May 8th, I believe, is the release date. But you can order it. It's available now for pre-order on Amazon. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Well, I know for sure I'm going to be getting your book because I love working with tarot spreads. And I only actually have one book on, you know, specifically on tarot spreads. And it's a really awesome book. But I, I've always wanted, you know, I'm always looking for new ideas and and stuff like that. So I can hardly wait to start working with your book. <laughs> Yay! And if nothing else, it'll give you like good questions that you maybe didn't think of to ask about the person you're crushing on. Or it'll give you like, you know, yay. So yay. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, it was so much fun being on your show. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Sasha. And, and good luck. Thank you. You too.